good morning. It's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. I've been reading about Genesis chapter 34. Of course, I read it before I went to bed last night. I've read it again this morning. Um, I meditated on it a little bit before I got up out of the bed. And um, I read two different commentaries this morning on uh, what they had to say about the reading of the word. And they were quite different. Um, one I liked a lot better than the other because one, um, the guy really gets on to, uh, Dinah for, um, going into the city with the women of the city, um, as if she's full of mischief and rebellion. And I'm not real sure that was true or not. And of course we don't know. Um, the other commentary talks about Dinah, and he doesn't um, portray her in such a way as that. Um, I will say this chapter is about um, Jacob and his children going into a new land with a new people. And Jacob, um, as some of us have experienced, is experiencing some things that his children do that, of course, he is not proud of. Um, and kids will be kids, but now his kids, they went a little bit over and beyond what was required of them and took revenge. And revenge is really not ours to take, it's the Lord's. And um, he teaches us that he does do that for us and bad things happen to bad people now not all the time but there will be a period in their life when it happens and it may be 50 years later but eventually God gets around to taking care of a situation and we shouldn't feel like we are the ones who have to now this is about Jacob and his kids um, coming into a land and his daughter Dinah um, I don't know if you remember, but he married Leah first. He was promised Rachel and deceived and given Leah. This girl that we're talking about is Leah's daughter in chapter 34. Uh, it's not his only daughter. It may have been Leah's only daughter. We don't know. Uh, but as they come into this place, she decides she's going to go find some friends. Okay? So Dinah goes out... Uh, to meet some of the girls of the land. And whether or not she was going out, I mean, I would think she just wanted to be with girls her age. Maybe that, I mean, as many wives as Jacob had, you would think that she would have had some kids her age, but I don't really know if she did or not. And we personally don't know if she was re being rebellious or not, um, or if she was just going out to have a good time. Uh, but when she went out, the, uh, I think, I don't know if he's called a king or not. Let me see what he's called. Anyway, the man that was over the land where they were, his son, his name is Shechem, I believe, or Sheshem. Uh, his name is Hamar. And um, his son meets Dinah. And he, he thinks she's so beautiful, and he does defile her, and he lays with her before they're married. Or he just lays with her when he sees her, which is not what you're supposed to do, of course. So her brothers were really mad, okay? Now, Jacob, being a godly man, instead of getting real irrational and crazy like her brothers did, Jacob just said... Um, which is her dad, look, y'all could take her to wife, but, um, and we can be a people. But now her, his sons said, no, you know, he's defiled her. These people are not Israelites. They don't deserve to be with our sister. They're not circumcised. So if they'll all get circumcised, then we will allow him to marry our sister. So Jacob listens to his sons and 
the men are willing to be circumcised, and they circumcised every man there. Not just the the king and his son. Let's see if they call him a king. Anyway, you get the gist. He was over the country. So, uh, since the king and his son was going to be circumcised, all the men got circumcised. Well, on the third day that they were circumcised, these two kids, or boys, or brothers, did something terrible. They knew the men were in pain. They knew the men were down and in their homes. And they took swords, two of them. Let me tell you what their names were. Listen to this. But on the third day, when there was soreness, the two sons of Jacob, Simeon and Levi, who were Dinah's brothers, each man took his sword, came upon the city boldly, okay? They slew all of the men. They slew Hamar, Shechem. They slew the king and his son. They slew um, every man with the edge of their sword. They took Dinah out of their house and went out. And the sons of Jacob came upon the slain and they spoiled the city because they had defiled their sister, they took their sheep, their oxen, their asses, and all that which was in the city, and that which was in the field, all of their wealth, all of their little ones and their wives, they took captive and spoiled all that was in the house. And Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, you have troubled me, their dad, you have troubled me to make me stink among the inhabitants of this land among the Canaanites and the Perizzites. And I being few in number, they'll gather themselves together against me and kill me, and I shall be destroyed and I in my house. And they said, should he deal with our sister as she was a harlot? Now, um, so we again notice that the sons were acting deceitfully. And um, the man on this commentary goes to tell us, let me tell you who this, let me see if it tells me who this commentary is from. Chuck Smith. He says, um, this is what we should get out of this, y'all. I'm having to go back up and find my place. Sorry, y'all. He doesn't just read about, he doesn't just write about this. He writes about several chapters in one writing. So it takes me a second to find my place once I've scrolled up. But I want to read this to y'all because it's important. Um, well, for heaven's sakes. Oh, here it is. Okay. He says, we notice the sons are acting deceitfully. And it is interesting how that again, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. We've heard that. That actually comes out of Galatians 6, 7. It says, Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Okay? And he says, Jacob is guilty of deceiving his father so that he could receive the blessings. And now his sons are deceiving him. I was sitting here studying, and I didn't put my dogs up, and I should have. And now my cat's meowing. She stayed here during our vacation, and the dogs uh, went with us. And so anyway, she's probably enjoying the fact that we're home. And she can tell us what to do. She likes to tell us what to do. You know, cats like to tell you when to feed them and when they need to do this or that. They like for you to do things for them. 
But anyway, it says, um, Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. Now, God is really very plain, very opening. It's showing to us. I like this part because this is what I was thinking of this morning when I was in the bed because I read this before I went to bed. And he says, God's really plain and very opening. It's showing to us that um, the people he chooses are not perfect people at all. Okay? Now, Simeon and Levi are to come into the judgment for this later on, he says. And years later, in the 49th chapter of Genesis, it is recorded when Jacob is about to die. He gathers his 12 sons around him, around his bed. He began to prophesy over his son and tell each one of them why they didn't receive the birthright, right, really. So, here we have these kids, or men, really, who go in and take revenge for their sister. And it's telling us that Jacob didn't, he was very sore with them. And he was even sore at his deathbed at them for what they did because they, slay, they slayed a whole city. That's terrible. And so he was not happy about them doing that at all. Um, but they do, God does get his revenge later. In other words, they, uh, whatsoever man so, so with that shall he reap. So they're going to pay for it later in life, okay? So, and I was thinking this morning, and I'll just be honest with y'all, um, I've said two cuss words on Color Valley Cooks lately. I said hell, which there is a hell, it's real, but it's still a slang, you know, it's, it's not a good word. And then I said shit when I cut my finger the other day, and I thought, you know, and I know this is a Bible study, but I did. And we take stuff for granted like, oh, that's no big deal. And, you know, when, when girl, and this is true. I mean, a lot of us believe this way. When girl said, my mama always said shit wasn't a bad word unless you got it on your hand. And I know I'm saying it, but I'm just giving you an example. Well, let me just say this. Out of the heart is where the mouth speaks, okay? Um, and I should not say bad words. Do you know that my husband, now I was raised in a home that they said bad words constantly. If I take my glasses off, I can't see nothing, but they're glaring in the light. And I'm just going to talk to you for a minute. So it doesn't matter. So I can't read what y'all say right now. But let me just say that I was raised in a home that was, and I know some of these people know me and I know they don't like for me to say anything about my family because they think it's disrespectful but I don't care because it is what it is, you know, and it's like my aunt told me one time, she said, they didn't live there. You know, you can have a brother, you can, just like Jacob, he has 12 sons. You can have 12 kids and two of them out of the 12 be completely different than the other 10. And just because my family um, had a bad egg, doesn't mean they're all bad eggs. And the, the reason I say that is because um, I don't hardly ever talk about my daddy, but my daddy is mean, mean, mean. Now, his daddy, Albert Benefield, was not a mean man. He was a good man. He was an humble man. He was an honest man. And my brother is a lot like my granddaddy, Eddie. And he's a pastor. Eddie's been humble since the day he was born. He's a sweetheart. My daddy is not saved. Now, he'll say if you ask him, I'm all right. Don't worry about me. I'm all right. Well, let me just say, our actions speak louder than anything. I've never seen my daddy read a Bible. I've never seen my daddy pray. I've never seen my daddy... He does good for people, but he, and, and he is a giver. So if he were to ever um, come to know God, and I know you, some of y'all probably think I'm judging him, 
But look, he's my daddy. I know him well. Um, he may uh, one day become saved. I hope so. Um, I hope that one day he turns his life over to God. I mean, if the man was saved, he'd go hear my brother preach. He hadn't even been over there. Um, he knows the Bible back and forth. He knows the stories in the Bible. He was raised in the church. His daddy was a deacon. He went to every service when he was young. Um, but let me just say this. Kids, like I said, you could have ten kids and they'll all be different. And just because one is bad don't mean they're all bad. Okay? And just because one is bad doesn't mean the parents were bad. Now, there are exceptions. And Chris is in the was in the field of uh, school, you know, like he taught kids in school, and he was always in that with the older kids in high school and sometimes middle school. And I remember when we met, uh, he would have some kids that were really rebellious, and Chris is from a really good family. His daddy didn't treat his mama bad. His daddy was a good man. He was an honest man. And so when Chris would come across a child that was disrespectful and... Um, what would you call it? Oh, I can't even think of the word. Anyway, he when we first met, he would just down that kid so bad, and I would be like, Chris, you don't even know what his parents are like. You know, when me and my uh, sister were younger, we did things we shouldn't have done, but a lot of it was, I think, to get out of our home. Now, a lot of people in our city... And in our community probably thought that me and Melissa were just total rebellions. But let me just say this. They didn't know what our house was like. Even if our parents came from good people. My mom was a daughter of a Baptist minister. And my dad was the son of a deacon. That didn't mean that our house was a blissful place. And I'm not talking about little, simple things. I'm talking about big things. We had a lot of big things happen in my home that were very much not godly. Okay. So, uh, we're, I guess where I'm going with this is kids are kids and they can be different. Um, and sometimes it is the parents' fault. Sometimes the parents raise them um, bad and the kids are going to be bad sometimes the parents are good and you just get a bad egg because that's just who they are uh, Jacob was a good man and now he's got two sons of course Jacob did deceive his father even if he was a good man now he's got two sons that have slain the city um, I guess where I'm trying to go with that is that we shouldn't judge people uh, for how their kids act uh, sometimes their kids do do things because of the parents, and sometimes they don't. So only God knows, really, what goes on in homes. Only God knows our hearts. Only God knows my daddy's heart, okay? Um, the reason I think he's not saved is because of his actions. I mean, I think somebody that's saved, if they do something that's wrong, feel bad about it because they have the Holy Spirit that tells them they've done something wrong. Um, when I said the bad words on my show, I felt bad. I really need to just delete the two videos um, because it's wrong. And I'm going to do a segment on why it's wrong because so many of us think that it's not wrong that maybe I should do a segment on why it is wrong. Um, but anyway... I just wanted to say um, this is terrible what has happened for Jacob's family and his sons. And uh, they did pay for it in the end. So it makes you want to go read that next chapter and just see what he says to them on his deathbed and see what happens in their lives. And we will eventually see that, okay? Um, but let me see what else he had to say to us. I can't see anything without my glasses. Um, now let me get this. Let me say this. It says, this is important, y'all. Okay? 
because I'm not perfect. And even if I didn't cuss, I wouldn't be perfect. Chris never says a cuss word. We've been, I've, I met Chris in 1999. I've heard him say, now he, he, did, he did get mad on the boat and say one. I think I've heard him say a cuss word, and I'm not kidding. Since 1999, maybe five times, not five different ones, five times. He never cusses. Does that mean he's perfect? Absolutely not. It's just something that he detests. He don't like it. He thinks it's wrong. Um, does that make him better than me? Absolutely not. Does that make him closer to God than me? Absolutely not. Um, now, he is a godly man, and he is um, he knows the Bible way better than I do. Uh, but I'm just trying to show you that we're all imperfect. We all have our faults. We all can say and do things that are that are different from each other. Where I might say a cuss word, Chris may think something else and not say it out loud because I'm one that says things, okay? So it says, so least we get the concept in our minds, which we so easily do, that God just uses perfect people. Or God will just bless perfect people. God is careful to show us that these people are not perfect at all. And yet God chose them and God used them. And that's to encourage you because you know that you are not perfect. And yet God has chosen you and God wants to use you. And so it helps me to yield myself to God. This is the guy right in the commentary. He says, it helps me yield myself to God to know that I do not have to be perfect. Yet he wants me to be perfect, and I'm not. But he has provided for my imperfections through Jesus Christ. Amen to that. And thus God will use me, and that to me is always an exciting thing. So God doesn't try to gloss over and give you the picture of, you know, just perfect individuals, men. It says, man, these guys were horrible. And what they did was horrible. And yet God is going to use them to be the father of the nation. We're talking about the sons of Jacob. We're talking about the 12 sons of Jacob, the 12 tribes of Israel. And he uses these men, okay, to be the father of our nation. Now, that should encourage you, whether you're good, whether you're bad, whether you're mean, whether you're not. But I will say this. If you have Holy, the Holy Spirit in your heart, if you have been saved and born again, then when you say things you shouldn't say, when you do things you shouldn't do, when you stick your foot in your mouth, and we're going to do these types of things. It's not, we can't, we can't be perfect. But when we do do them, we should have a whisper in our ear that says, you know what, you shouldn't have said that. You know what, you shouldn't have done that. You know what, you should apologize. You should say you're sorry. You know what, you're not being the best wife today. Or you're not being the best mom today, or why don't you do this or that? I mean, it's got to be there. And if you can make excuses for yourself every single time you do something that's wrong to make it right, then you need to do a checkup because none of us are perfect. We all make mistakes. So, um, but I am going to do a segment on the curse words. But I do believe that some of us just have vices that others don't. I mean, I was raised in a house full of that. Chris wasn't. So um, I'm sure he was around it some, but he wasn't raised with it like I was. So it's a lot harder for me uh, when I get mad or when something, like when I cut my finger, it scared the snot out of me. And I should have said, oh, snot, you know, but I didn't. And it just shows what's in my heart. And I should be doing these Bible studies every day because if I did, I'd be closer to God. Um, and maybe once me and Chris get on this real schedule with it and the summer's over, um, I can get uh, back on track and start doing these more. But I'm glad y'all were here. And I'm glad you watched. Um, I would like you to go back and read Genesis 34 
today, if you can. I believe it's, yeah, Genesis chapter 34, if you want to see what uh, Jacob tells his sons on his deathbed, you can go to chapter, let's see, 49. Read it. See what he says to them. Um, but it only takes a minute to read a chapter in the Bible, so y'all try to do it today. Um, I've read it three times real fast. I mean, it's real easy to do. But anyway, let's say our prayers. I hope y'all have a wonderful day. I'm going to sit. I have decided I'm going to sit down and do some type of um, menu for us. We're going to start eating healthier. We've got to. Uh, and thanks for tuning in. Okay, we're going to say our prayers. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for your son, Jesus Christ, who came here to show us what a perfect man is and give us an example of why he is worthy to die and shed his blood for our sin. Um, we thank you for showing us all of these people in your word to show us that we are not perfect, no matter what, how we try to be perfect, no matter what we do, um, to show us that we need your son. Um, to help lead God and direct us throughout our days. Um, be with us today. Be with our families. Be with um, all of those who are at work or traveling or just at home sitting watching TV today. I pray we have a wonderful day. I pray that we all know who you are and know that you're our Heavenly Father who loves us more than anyone or anything could ever think of loving us. Um, in Christ's name we pray, amen. You have a wonderful day, y'all. Love ya. Bye.